I think the story is about wasted time and that it's never too late to, you know, kind of follow your heart and do what you want. Um, and I, I hope that people take that away from it. You know, it's never too late to kind of find your happiness and, uh, you know, to be brave in love and other things. Also, I know people have been asking about Neon Red in paperback form. I just want to let you know that I am working on the final edit for Neon Red to put it in the paperback form because once it's in paperback I can't change anything. So I do want to finish a final edit on that and then that will be available soon and I'll let you know as soon as it's available. I'll probably announce it in the next video. I definitely can't finish it before the end of December unfortunately. Also, people have been asking me about the third book. I just want to let you know we have a title. The title of book three of the Zeri series will be called In This World. I hope you like it. I love it. My mom loves it. I think it fits perfectly. I wanted to keep to the trend of using a lyric that I thought was significantly representative of their relationship or representative of an issue in their relationship. So this thing upon me, neon red, and then now in this world, which of course comes from Harry Styles as it was because that was a massive song. But more importantly, the lyrics in that song are significant for the Zeri relationship. And the song is representative of Harry's metamorphosis and his forced perspective shift that he went through in 2020. And the book will touch on that in a lot of ways metaphorically. So that's why I named it In This World. The descriptions are here. You can read what the book will be about and it will include the point of view of both Zane and Harry alternating um, on occasion. So thank you so much for listening to all that. Now we can get into the video. So my last video was a traditional review of the movie My Policeman. But this video I wanted to be more of an informal review of Harry's role in My Policeman and why I think it was significant for him and why I think he chose to be a part of that film. Because we know he was adamant about being included in that film of his own accord. Michael Grandish, the director, did not have Harry Styles on his radar and he did not pursue Harry Styles. Harry Styles himself pursued the book of My Policeman, then the script of My Policeman, and then the director of My Policeman to be cast in the film himself. So that is highly significant in comparison to something like Don't Worry Darling, which he did not pursue himself. He was pursued for that film because of his popularity. So it means a ton that Harry sought out My Policeman to be a part of himself. And I just kind of want to unpack why I personally believe he wanted to be a part of this film. I think Harry wanted to be a part of My Policeman because he wanted to express his hidden truth about his sexuality under the guise of acting. And we will be wise to remember this isn't the first LGBTQ film Harry has been involved in on a personal and heartfelt level. We should remember that in 2017, Harry actually penned his first song for a film ever, Not So Typical Love Song, which he wrote with others for a movie called Love, Simon, which is a story about the coming of age tribulations of a closeted gay teen boy. This video goes rather deep into issues of sexuality and queer baiting, which many may not be comfortable with. So I kindly ask you to exit the video if you feel the need to scream Harry is unlabeled or defend his sacred heterosexuality in the face of my personal theories. Literally, no one cares, and we don't need you to repeatedly cry that he's unlabeled. Some may ask, why would Harry play the role of a closeted gay man if he really was one and risk exposure? To that I say, isn't the more logical question, why would a straight and happy hetero man seek out the role of a closeted gay man so desperately that he acquired the script of his own accord long before casting began for this movie? He wasn't sent the script by the director. He sought it out himself before later seeking out the director and making his case for why he should be cast and according to the director had already memorized a great deal of the script outside of his role of Tom. This is very telling. Also, most people involved with the cast is queer and this was purposeful because it was Michael Grandage's vision. 
So he wanted representation in this film and he did just that. So the fact that Harry landed the lead role speaks volumes to that end. I'm here to make the case that in late 2019 through early 2020, Harry was a man walking a fine line of self-acceptance and longing to be open about his true identity, but knew that until the person he loves is ready to make the same decision, his hands were tied. During the course of this mindset, which is what I call the fine line error mindset, Harry penned and released Fine Line the album with Lights Up as the first single, a song about self-acceptance that he released on National Coming Out Day, as well as including a lyric in the song She, which is a song title copied from the man he loves, that reads, she sleeps in his bed while he plays pretend, so pretend, as well as a glaring lyric in the song called Golden, which is another song taken from the man he loves, which he often altered on stage to read, I'm hoping someday you are open. I know that you're scared because I'm so open. In this same mindset of self-acceptance and longing to be open with the public about his true and secret identity, Harry moved from releasing a song about self-acceptance on National Coming Out Day to obtain the script for a period film about two closeted queer men stuck in a toxic love triangle with an exploitative female due to heteronormative societal pressures. Believe it or not, this happened to be Harry's precise reality at the time he read the book My Policeman by Bethan Roberts, which we can logically conclude is the reason the story touched him so much. But he also obtained the script for the upcoming movie early in 2020 and had a meeting with Michael Grandage and essentially made his case for why he should be cast in this film. That is an entirely different Harry from the man we see today. Fine Line Harry was on a particular course with a particular goal in mind, which he was cruelly derailed from by the person he loves in spring of 2020, following which Harry changed course, had a devastating perspective shift, let go of his past and former self, and underwent a self-described metamorphosis that, in my opinion, changed him for the worse, which I won't go into into this video because it's way too much to unpack. With that being said, Harry Styles continues to be an incredibly frustrating enigma for many, myself included. No one is saying he owes us an explanation of his sexuality. You misunderstand the issue entirely, if that's what you're getting from this video. The issue is far more nuanced than just wanting him to come out of the closet, which I personally only look forward to and root for because deep down I personally feel it's what he truly truly wants and has been trying to tell us in creative ways for a while now. I believe he is a queer man who longs to be open about who he is, but is being inhibited on some level by multiple forces, both internally and externally. As someone who often listens very closely to the things Harry says, I find countless contradictions that to me often feel like a cry for help, such as him saying he's content with only his family and friends knowing about his sexuality, but then in the next moment, dropping significant songs on National Coming Out Day and changing lyrics on stage that reflect he's hoping someday he can be open again after what took place in 2020. To me, that doesn't sound like a man who is content with hiding his identity from the public and his fans. Someone who's just content with only his family knowing about his sexuality. To me, it sounds like a man who continues to grapple with his hidden identity and someone who is desperate to shout who he is and who he really loves from the rooftops, but is being emotionally and systemically discouraged from doing so. I also believe the unlabeled excuse, which he has never really openly subscribed to himself, is just an explanation his fans adopted for him to explain his frustrating sexual ambiguity when it comes to his branding and marketing. But I believe the unlabeled excuse is, for him, an insidious form of closeting and a form of compromise between him and his label for commercial purposes, as well as him and the man he loves, who is himself crippled by internalized homophobia that often affects Harry's own ideas about queerness and openness and honesty in the way he articulates himself in interviews, which the LGBT community has flamed him for on more than one occasion for misspeaking or for appearing to speak on behalf of a community that he refuses to hourly claim. We just aren't certain if Harry's inhibitions are contractual with his record label, Columbia, 
or his representation firm, Full Stop Management. We also don't know if they're just internalized on some level due to emotional blackmail or guilt from a significant other who is actively intimidating Harry. Or we don't know if he believes he is being noble or protective of someone in his life who he personally fears he may expose if he himself fully came out and admitted his own sexuality out loud. I believe it's a highly complex amalgamation of all three taking precedence in Harry's heart and mind. So much so that it's eating away at Harry mentally and emotionally and he has no one to turn to and confide in because no one else can know the truth and because half the public thinks he's totally straight while the other half have deemed him a devious queer baiter because sometimes he cracks and in those moments he just needs to express who he really is even a tiny bit at the risk of really upsetting the many people depending on him to be straight public facing mainly his label as well as his heterosexual fans who make up the vast majority of his fan base and most significantly his lover who suffers from an extreme form of internalized homophobia that he admitted to himself in 2021. So Harry cracks and he reveals a little about himself on occasion because he's human. But then he runs back into the closet and hides again to throw people off his trail and is therefore ultimately deemed a queer baiter. Regardless, you're a very unserious person if you can't see that Harry Styles is indeed queer that he has been showing this to the world for a while now, and that equally, he has been struggling to walk this fine line, both in and out of the closet for years. For example, he'll write a super confessional song like Boyfriends, describing in intimate and excruciating detail what it's like to date a selfish, sexually exploitative dickhead boyfriend who takes him for granted but then runs and hides behind the heteronormative PR safe malarkey that the song was written about his sister and his female friends. So ultimately, he gets to express his feelings about the man in his life, but must mitigate the impact of that unspeakable hidden truth by pretending he's just a pathetic pick me who wants to pretend to understand women better so that he can date them. I can't think of anything more vomit inducing than the garbage narrative he came up with to mitigate the honesty of the song Boyfriends. I would rather he didn't release the song than to release it and completely diminish it with poorly devised lies. But unfortunately, he feels it's necessary for the time being. And it breaks my heart. If I'm not being disingenuous, I personally understand why so many people deem Harry a queer baiter. Because many of them feel betrayed and hurt by him because they feel he is toying with their identity as if it were cosplay or a form of cultural appropriation, only to ultimately and repeatedly cast it aside to only date high profile women publicly and these grand PR charades, which are nothing but a ploy for media attention and headlines. And then for him to turn around and lecture that community who trusted in him by saying that queer people feeling the need to label themselves is archaic and wrong. Yes, that's exactly the thing to say to a community who struggled for fucking centuries and who in many societies still do today to simply admit their identity out loud and walk in their truth without persecution or castigation of some form. So naturally it would follow that Harry shitting on labels with regard to sexuality in particular can be seen as quite arrogant and offensive, especially for people who are convinced his queerness is make-believe. Just a contrived and duplicitous marketing tactic that has paid off dividends for his major brand deals, especially Gucci. Oh, and did you happen to notice that anytime Harry looks super gay or super queer, he's actually selling you a product? From Gucci, to pleasing, to his new line, ha ha ha. His gay cosplay always comes along with a financial benefit for him and his team. So in some respects, he technically is a queer baiter as far as his brand and marketing are concerned. The term has the same application as it does for film critique. It's why people like Billy Porter rightfully spoke out about Harry being honored with a Vogue cover because he wore a Gucci ball gown. To some, Harry was arrogantly appropriating what for many is politics and a way of life but for him is ultimately and admittedly meaningless just for fun. So essentially it was a cheap ploy for headlines and also you guessed it to sell more Gucci. 
So in effect, Harry's use of queer culture and queer symbols when it comes to his brand and his marketing tactics has the same application as the term does in film critique, leading your queer audience down a heavily implied path to get them to be invested in your brand and buy your products with this false contrived show of solidarity and sameness, only to ultimately pull the rug from under them at the last possible second to strictly promote heteronormativity in your public dating life and take all the dresses and ball gowns off when it isn't being used for magazines and stage wear or photo shoots for brands. However, what those people who accuse Harry of queer baiting don't get is that Harry is indeed queer. I know they swear up and down he is, but he is not a straight guy appropriating queerness to sell clothes and nail polish. He is, in fact, a queer man occasionally appropriating heterosexuality to sell music records. That's the big secret. He is queer and deserves love, support, and sympathy for his struggles as a closeted and confused man who has been through hell since he was 16 trying to conceal his queerness and also battling the internalized homophobia of the man he loves. This leads us back to my policeman and why Harry chose to be a part of the film during the fine line era specifically when he was seeking to be more open about who he truly is. The film deals with exactly his dilemma with the man he loves, just in another era where homosexuality was criminalized. I personally and many others feel he signed up to this film as a message to the man he loves in order to demonstrate the dangers of wasted time and cowardice but also to illustrate a stark dichotomy between society in the 1950s when gay people really had reasons to fear for their freedom and safety versus how accepting society is today for their particular set of circumstances. It was also to illustrate the dangers of hiding behind toxic and exploitative women who seek to use vulnerable closeted men to their own ends for domestic achievement as well as social and monetary gain. My Policeman is nothing if not a tragic, heart-wrenching, cautionary tale, during which Harry confessed a great deal in his incredibly authentic performance as Tom, but also in his beautiful, heartfelt, thought-provoking answers about the story of My Policeman and what it meant to him as compared to the nonsensical drivel he offered up for questions about his role in the film Don't Worry Darling. You know, my favorite thing about the movie is like it feels like a like a movie. It feels like a real, like, you know, go to the theater film movie that, you know, you, you kind of, the reason why you go. What I like about acting is I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. And it's quite fun. Humankind. Did that, was that an answer? It was words. <laughs> yeah, I think what initially drew me to the script is, uh, the general themes are incredibly timeless. I think that's why the film works so well. I think, you know, the themes of, uh, of love and freedom and the kind of search for that is, is um, incredibly relevant, kind of whatever time you were to set it in. You know, speaking on, uh, on the position of Tom, I think he's a product of his time. Um, I, I think that the nicest thing about kind of our three characters was is kind of echoing what Emma said, but I think despite all the complexity and um, you know the the kind of deceiving nature of like a lot of aspects of the kind of triangle between them, there's also just a lot of um, like very real friendship. I think as well, and just having that kind of duality of um, you know, everything not being so kind of black and white in terms of, well, you've wronged me and that means I don't like you anymore and all that kind of thing. It's, it's not really how the world works and how human beings work. So I think there's so much nuance to them and so much complexity that comes for people in real life around, you know, sexuality and finding themselves and I think he's very curious, which is, is kind of, I think he's someone who is born into a very small world. And, and as, uh, you know, if you're born into that kind of environment, it's hard to, 
I think you feel like you know where the edge of the world is. And slowly throughout the story, I think he's realizing that it's a little further away than, you know, Brighton or um, kind of that coast. And I think, you know, people live entire lives in very small bubbles like that. And if, if that's how you've been brought up and everyone around you and the generations before you, your parents, etc., have all lived within that kind of small bubble, it's obviously very difficult to even picture the world outside of that. Yeah, I think Tom's version of acceptance is, is a pretty depressing one. I think it's, uh, you know, I think he accepts that he's going to deny this part of himself for a really long time. Ultimately, to me, the whole story is about wasted time. And I think wasted, wasted time is the most devastating thing because it's the only thing we can't control. It's the one thing we can't have back. And, you know, the one thing that I think matters, whatever kind of life you've lived, at the end is you think back on time with people you love and um, time that you spent. I mean, I'm assuming I haven't been at when I've died, but you get what I'm saying? <laughs> But, you know, being, that is the one thing that none of us can control. So I think the whole story being about this wasted time and I think, you know, going to the end and where, you know, you find Linus's characters, it feels like a brief moment of acceptance, which feels really wonderful. But it's also still kind of laced with this devastating Oh, if we were just, you know, braver, we wasted so much time. The last thing I would like to touch on is Harry admitting he related to the character of Marion, going along with things reluctantly. Maybe not your favorite parts of yourself in different characters, and I think that's why it kind of resonated with me so much, um, was just, you know, whether it's Marion's kind of, um, you know, kind of like acceptance of, or kind of like going along with things kind of reluctantly, or which I believe is why we see him reluctantly remaining closeted because it is reluctant. If you don't see that by now, I don't know what to say for you. As well as him reluctantly participating in toxic PR relationships that make him miserable and which he has very apparent compunction about. If you didn't notice that these past couple of years, then again, you're missing the bigger picture here. 
I also believe his answer about Marion going along with things reluctantly also encompassed him going along with his secret partners, PR and Beardy relationships as well, which have drove Harry up a wall for years since he was a teenager with both engagements and now babies. I have so much more to say about Harry and this subject, but I'll cut this video short because I need to run. But this is why I personally believe Harry wanted to be a part of my policeman in early 2020 and why the film means so much to him and his journey as a closeted queer man. I think the story is about wasted time and that it's never too late to, you know, kind of follow your heart and do what you want. Um, and I, I hope that people take that away from it. You know, it's never too late to kind of find your happiness and, uh, you know, to be brave in love and other things.